Canucks are on a tear. Seven straight days of gains. It's the first and longest streak we've seen in two years. Yet Wall Street, everybody's happy. Yields are down. Oil is down. And everybody's thinking that because of the seasonality, we're going to see up days from now until the rest of the year. Welcome, everyone, to Buy, Hold, Sell. I am your trader, Todd Schoenberger, and I am joined by my friend and co-host, Tobin Smith, out in sunny and hot Scottsdale, Arizona. And Better we than have a being in Jersey now, trust me. <laughs> Absolutely. Seaside Heights, baby. So and we have a very special guest who is coming back to the show today because he actually has predicted this and he has it in writing for everyone. Jeffrey Hirsch, the editor in chief of the Stock Traders Almanac. Jeff, welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell. Good to be with you guys, man. You, it's, you it's get the victory on. lap, Jeff. You definitely get the what I'm what I'm what I'm blown away by is it seems like Everybody became a seasonality freak. You you like created unleashed a uh, a torment. I, I I've never heard so many fundamentalists as well as technical analysts. Yes, all using the Jeff Hirsch motto. So I I think you, you, there's some royalties due to you, brother. Well, you know, with the Almanac in its 57th year, we've been kind of yeah. at this for a little while. You know, hats off to my late father, Yale Hirsch, but. It's kind of encouraging on one level to hear people talking about seasonality, add some sort of street cred to it. Um, I am a big proponent of using fundamentals and technicals along with seasonals. I have an argument with some technical analyst friends that seasonality is just another form of technical analysis, looking at price over time. But, you know, um, it also concerns me, you know, that everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. I'm a contrarian as well. So... You know, there's, it's not going to be this easy. Uh, the cycles aren't going to track so perfectly as they have been. The four-year and the seasonal cycles, it, it just, you know, I said we have, uh, we used to have a, a, a sticker on my father's office door, the walking on water indicator. You know, when you're right for a long time, you got to be careful. You got to watch the hubris. So we're looking for seasonals to either perform like they're supposed to or not. If they don't, it becomes an indicator. When seasonality is not working, it's like an indicator. Remember Edson Gould? You ever remember him finding some forecasts? Died in like 87, I think. His yeah. line is that if the market doesn't go up during the bullish season, then there are more powerful forces at play. And when the, that bullish season is over, excuse me, those forces will really have their say. So we got a, we had our Santa Claus rally bet last year. We clarified what it really is. You know, we have our January indicator trifecta with the Santa Claus rally, the little, you know, seven day trading uh, uh, period at the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. The first five days and the full month, that's our January indicator trifecta. When you hit that, the market's up 90% of the time. You know, it's S&P 17.5%. We hit that this year. Um, we didn't get it in 02, excuse me, 22. Um, so we're watching to see if we get this year-end, you know, Q4 rally. But look at some of the charts that, I, that you know, we put out there. There's yeah. there's chop there's chop in, this, in, in November. And, you know, there's, there's other things going on there. But what, what are you guys seeing? Well, I, I'll tell you one thing, Jeff. It, it was interesting to me um, in the technicals that uh, we actually had institutional buying, uh, you know, in this last last week. Uh, today we had retail buying. In other words, we just we take the the the, the positions of uh, size and and extrapolate that and say who's buying, right? The other thing that was interesting to me is that I I think we discount now or we don't discount enough the fact that uh you know stock buyback season starts the first monday you know of this quarter and um if you look at the, the number of s p companies that are actively buying back stock i mean that's certainly a tailwind and, and we never had that back in the day when your dad started seasonality uh but, there no buybacks but there still was the, the the movement and influence of what institutions do with their money on the quarterly basis. No and question. We're seeing that. I mean, whether it's the October 31st deadline, which we could get into with, for funds to reconcile their accounting, or yeah. just the seasonal turn from Q3 to Q4 with everyone getting set up for, for year end. I had somebody ask me, uh, I was down at, at the money show, and um, somebody was saying, do you, do you really think, or no, maybe it was at the New Orleans conference, somebody said this. Do you really think it's the it's the seasonality and not the all the news that's going on? I'm like, why do you think that news is coming out now? You know, they're trying to get things done by year end. So it, it's it's how retail people move as a group in unison at regular times of the year and and institutions even more so. Um, and that's what really drives the, the you know the seasonals and and 
in comedy. I mean, that's not okay. Well, you, you got your uh, your uh, victory lap first. So now what? As I said, now we we watch uh, the seasonals, but in the meantime, we put out um, you know our buy recommendations using MACD on the the Dow S and P uh, QQQs and and IWMs. You know, I call them the diamond spiders and cubes. Right. Um, I bought some myself. Uh, we put out um, different se sector seasonal trades for all the, the the sectors that come into season. Most of them consumer, <clears throat> healthcare, biotech, et cetera, banking, and then we roll out a basket of stocks for our, our newsletter subscribers using uh, a robust fundamental screen, looking for the acceleration of growth in um, revenue and earnings and undervalued stocks that are, you know, humming below the, the radar and, and kicking out good numbers, you know, sequentially and year over year. And that's had a lot of juice to it. I mean, we've talked about it before last year. One of the, the highlights was super microcomputer. Yeah. Excuse me. So those are the kinds of, of stocks that we, are looking for, and uh, then we manage the positions. You know, sell half on a double, take your winnings off the off the table, and let your you know let your initial vessel table let your winnings ride. Honor the stops, honor the buy limits, and then you know, yeah, manage yeah. manage the uh, the portfolio. Well, it 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 you know this last year we've had some of these you know spasms where stocks just you know shoot up 40, 80 percent. Then we're coming off the last twelve years where it was free money. So people were making 15% a year in a market that was 7%. And I, I, you know, if you started investing in 2010, first off, you think you're a genius. And secondarily, you've never seen a market go down until 2022, but you right. never saw bonds just crash that way, right? So, so yep. everything became inverted. And I think a lot of people needed to have a little bitch slap across the face to say, look, at, if you bought SMCI, which I give you kudos for at 125 bucks, and it shoots to $425, and we were an owner for a long time too, you sell the damn thing. Or at least you, sell half. Yeah, at least half. Get your money back. Absolutely. Our our, our price was 81.93. Oh wow. Well, even more kudos to you, my friend. So uh, Jeff, so, yeah. so on the Almanac, Almanac, what I think is is so compelling is the fact that. Right when Jerome Powell went into this dovish stance from the press conference last week, we've or two weeks ago, we've or yeah, last week, I guess, we've seen the markets just rally nonstop. And there's this feeling of optimism amongst the traders on Wall Street that, yeah, we are going to continue this rally well into the end of the year. Your almanac, though. Does it take, I mean, there's no way that it could take that into consideration. That type what is of it? knowledge. The, the Powell getting dovish? Well, not only that, but really just a cycle of a tightening cycle or an easing cycle. I mean, that's you, that's different. That that's that's a different cycle. That that's that's not a regular re, you know uh, right. repeating cycle on a counter basis. That, that is a a different well, type of cycle. It well, adds to it. It's well, where I'm going with this is that. Well, where I'm going with this is that is that how much history is put into that prognostication of the almanac? Because it's the the obviously the the quarter, the final quarter preceding an election year is always a great time to be long in the markets. I mean, is this what we're looking at right now? I think so. Um, but the prognosticating that I do in the almanac isn't just the seasonal and historical cycles of the four year and then seasonal. Like we take into consideration macro <laughs> trends. I mean, our five disciplines in the newsletter are seasonal, fundamental, technical, monetary, and sentiment. So we're looking at that. We're not just seasonals only. I mean, yes, that's our, our core, our foundation. That, that's our edge uh, on others. But I'm looking at, you know, resilient GDP, uh, a, a labor market that's starting to tighten a little bit. Um, you know, bonds, the 10 year has been something we've been keying on for, for all year long, as well as um, the dollar and oil. So we, we take in all that stuff when we make our prognostications. Like if you look at the beginning of the book, I make that outlook. I do that in June. Yes, I'm using the cycles, the four year cycle, the seasons, but we're also seeing, uh, uh, taking into account what's going on in the world, what's going on in the economy, what's going on with the Fed, what's going on with technicals, internals. I think we were you know, before in the green room, we were talking about the, the internals that, that Toby traps, I think are very important. Um, so we take all that into consideration. So it's not just the cycles in the almanac. It's, you know, reality as well. Yeah, well, it, you know, Fed cycles, when you go back in history, I, 
I still go back to, um, you know, the times, for instance, uh, 99, 98, 99, when, you know, we had the Magnificent Seven in 98, 99. It was just, it was just AOL and JDS Uniface and Cisco. And, you know, there was seven to 10 stocks that were responsible for 80%, right, of the, uh, of the gains that year. And we back got, in the 60s, there was the Nifty 50. Nifty 50, absolutely. IBM and, uh, you know, commercial credit. Oh, oh, my God. I'm not even that old. I, but people have told me about the Nifty 50. Um, but we're, we're, we are in a, a different economy. And that's what always gets me about the seasonality continuing to work. I mean, you know, in that Nifty 50, almost all those companies were manufacturing companies, only, you know, or technology. Um, very little technology uh, in the, you know, the dot com run. Well, that was craziness. Um, this one is being led by companies that are sitting on, I don't know, today, like $280 billion of cash that's actually earning them, you know, 5% interest uh, on their money. They are operating right. at, at record profit margins, certainly compared to profit margins, you know, in any of these other uh, historical times. So, there seems like there's also a lot more fundamentals behind the market. And then the other thing, of course, was just the fear factor. It, it, you know, when we got down to that point that there was five stocks making a new high and 1,452 not, listeners and viewers have to understand that it's not all computers that are doing the trading. There's human no. beings. And there's people, there's human beings programming those computers. And human beings program those computers, right? Exactly. And the most predictable one I've ever seen is when there's five new highs and 100, 1,428 lows, because by definition, that means that everybody who had to sell or was short, uh, et cetera, all the other mechanics that make up a market were then accelerated by the fear factor of retail uh, sellers, because you could look at the size of these trades versus the institutions. And then and then all, all of a sudden, somebody wakes up and says, hey, you know what? If we don't close out these short positions, I'm not going to be able to make my 20% bonus for my hedge fund. And my first wife and my second wife are going to you know, want uh, the and divorce when, when do they have to? Sh when do they have to show those numbers? Well, it, it, it ends on December 31. On their year-end statements. And yes. In order to get that lined up, they got to start making maneuvers about three months ahead of time. You got it. So, you I mean, why does seasonality work? Because people are creatures of habit. Not only do we move in the herd fashion, but we also do things around the same times of the, the day, week, month, quarter, year. And, you know, we also have a, a regular election, presidential election every four years, unlike any other country in, on the planet. So it's force of habit. And yeah. people, people moving together, you know. All right. So, th so then the big question is, you're telling us is that following your uh, shizzle, I just like to use that word. It's a technical mm -hmm. term. Faux um, shizzle. That, um, <laughs> that faux shizzle, that uh, uh, we should, you know, follow this season. Um, what would change your mind? I mean, other than the fact, I was going to ask you, Jeff, did, did anyone ever, you know, did you ever see your, in, in all your work, that we were going to have two wars going on simultaneously. Israel and the Middle East were going to blow no. up. Oil prices would drop when the I, Middle East is blowing up. I, I mean, I remember the embargo of '73. That was one of my first, you know, memories as a kid. Yeah, that, and, and Watergate and what it did. Um, it's concerning. We got to watch it. We got to see how the market reacts. So, what would change my mind is if the market doesn't rally during the bullish season. You know, and I we have stops on most of our positions. In 02, in 22, I keep saying 02, in 22, we got stopped out of most everything, you know, after Russia invaded Ukraine. Yeah. And by the time we got our seasonal sell signal, we were pretty much in cash. So stick to the honor the stops. We're often all wrong. You know, a lot of times it's a matter of, of, you know, honoring the stop and admitting error and moving on. And then if we don't get Santa in the first five days in the January trifecta, we'll, we'll soften you know, our, our outlook. I'm already bullish for, for, for 2024 20, because of the power of a sitting president, regardless of the politics and what you think of the mm -hmm. individuals or the parties or their policies. The point is that you're you're talking about uncertainty versus versus certainty. And if you have somebody reelected that's already in there, you're going to have similar agendas and policies, you know, civically, uh, economically, and, and, and diplomatically and for the market. And if not, 
you know, it, it's going to be changed. It's going to change. So with the presidential yeah. cycle stuff, which is all in the 2024 edition, first five months of the year are usually good for, you know, uh, um, during presidential uh, election years. If not, it probably means the president's good chance of getting ousted. And mm -hmm. that probably means the market's not going to do so good, so well, forgive yeah. me, until the end of the year. And then I have a little thing, you know, in November, you know, there's a little ding dong, the witch is dead effect. Like if the unpopular president gets ousted, the market rallies. Yeah. So you got to you gotta read the tea leaves a little bit. You got to look at the fundamentals. You got to work your tacticals, the internals that you love. And, you know, it's not, if it was so easy, everyone would do it. That's yeah, it, it it sounds like the almanac, the benefit of the almanac is its age, because of all the lessons learned in history, you get to repeat that and follow those patterns. But Toby's right. This is unprecedented times. I know it's a word everybody likes to use, but I would imagine that everything that happens now will benefit the almanac 50 years from now, because if we have the same type of situation, we'll be able to at least respond to it. Well, well, we never... We we haven't had the same situation for I don't know since the end of World War II. Right, you know, nothing has repeated itself. Um, yeah. It, so it, I have a slide that I had for my my uh, members webinar. This time is not different. Remain calm. October happened. You know, it's October phobia. It's you know it. It's the same. I mean, yeah, there's some different factors out there. We got different Fed chairs. We have. Similar wars, <laughs> you know, Eastern Europe and the Middle East. I mean, it's not uh, not unheard of, but um, and I I laugh nervously, not not yeah. you know humorously. Um, yeah. But you, you, you know, you have to keep watching these things. You, you have to pay oh. attention, and you know, the cycles can only help you so much, and it's not in a vacuum. But the right. one one thing that doesn't ever change is human behavior. The one Correct. thing that never changes is how we're wired for fear and greed, but but it's all fear. Yes, I was just going to say that. Fear of missing out is the same amount of fear as fear of losing money. Or, or fear uh, yeah. of not having enough. And particularly, you know, uh, in a world where 74% of the trades today were algorithmic trades or, you know, robotic trades, automatic, the rules that they trade on are more important than it was when there really were guys down there on the floor, like, you know, with a piece of paper saying, is that okay? And Art Cashin was, you know, running the, the, uh, the yep. Pan Weber crew down there where I started. Um, so I've so, been on the floor. I've been in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. I mean, he, so, I mean, I'm saying is that the more things change, the, the more they don't change in terms of human behavior. And uh, why don't we come back and let's get some stock ideas or ETF ideas or something. I have a few for you. What about this movie with the T's? I love it. But listen, we are going to leave it on this block and we are going to come back with Jeff Hirsch, who is the editor in chief of the Stock Traders Almanac. We're going to talk about stock picks, ETFs. We also have to ask Jeff what happens or what can derail the 2024 Almanac. But we'll get to that right after the break. Please stay with us. Buy, hold, sell, brought to you by Cross Check Management. I mean, yeah, there's time to go today. Today, we're gonna go yeah. shopping. Yeah, I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. Mean, you can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last call out radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs> Kentucky Derby. Woodford Reserve Bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. What does it mean to be a leader? It's taking my first solo flight. At the University of North Dakota, we lead our own way. Welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell. With seven straight days, we've seen seven straight days of gains we've seen on Wall Street. It's the first uh, longest streak that we've seen in 
two years and uh, doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. With us today, though, we have the editor-in-chief of the Stock Traders Almanac, Jeffrey Hirsch, is joining by Hold Sell. And Jeff, when we left off at the last break, Toby teased it nicely. He said, hey, look, let's talk about some stocks and ETFs. I want to talk about something with the news that came out with Sam Bankman Freed, his conviction, and obviously crypto it now seems to be a, a front of page story again. And now I think we have what Bitcoin around 35K or so. Jeff, what do you think? I mean, you have any opinions on, on the crypto market right now and maybe some suggestions for the audience? Yes, I do. Uh, I mean, the Sam Bankman Freed thing is. I don't know. It's it's. I feel bad for the guy on some level, but you know he's going to be gone for a long time, and it's just it, it's sad. But I think it was good for for crypto. Um, I've been a skeptic for a long time because there's not a lot of data there. It kind of reminded me a lot of Vancouver mining stocks and that kind of wild right. west type stuff. But I connected with a CMT uh, guy named Adrian Zdunchik. Uh He's the crypto burb. He's got a big following. And he and I did a paper together, a study on the seasonality of Bitcoin. And it was fun. It was one of the more, it was a new thing for me. It's interesting. And, you know. Seasonality of Bitcoin. Now there's yeah, a new we one. We have a paper out there and it's just yeah. about enough data to cover it. And I put a little, I put, a, put the report out at the end of September when Bitcoin makes this seasonal low. I mean, it tracks, it, it had a little bit of flight to safety, you know, at the beginning of, of the, the conflict over in the Mideast. But for the most part, it seems to be tracking stocks. We kind of see a, a 4X NASDAQ type of thing. It's kind of like a tech stock. And um, again, with seasonality, you know, like we said in the last section segment, um, Bitcoin's got to have to prove itself. So far, so good. It's taken off like a, a rocket right on seasonal time. Um, I'm, I got in, you know, to GBTC. I like the, I like the ETFs. So my best position right there. So again, we've got that having coming it up or the having, whatever you want to call it. And it potentially next, next year, it tends to be a little soft as into it and rally after that. We haven't revisited those levels, but, um, I think getting bank and freedom out of the way and getting some more institutional, well, um, you know, acceptance is, is helping. Yeah, Jeff. I mean, I, I I had a conversation with a uh, Morgan Stanley guy today who works with uh, Invesco and the other ETF guys and Blackstone um, and actually Morgan Stanley, and they've all been buying Bitcoin because they are convinced that the ETF is going to be approved, and they're convinced it's going to be approved because the you know Gary Gensler got bit slapped by the yeah. Supreme Court. Um, number one. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm long Riot. I'm long Mara. Yeah. And uh, my favorite one is I'm long Coinbase, but I'm also also long a Coinbase ETF that's highly unique from Yieldmax ETFs. That's the ticker symbol CONY. And what the CONY does is, is it, it sells call options, you know, gets premium income in on a monthly basis. Um, if I told you that it, it's generated about a five percent a month uh, dividend for me in my Roth IRA, I think you you know you pull your hair out. Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, too long for that. Um, and uh, the, um, the 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 idea is that a you get this triple whammy here. A you get the seasonality. B you get the having, and having just simply means that. Every four years, the way that Sakamoto uh, designed the, the, the it's, logarithm. It's, it's not every four years. It's every 210 blocks on the chain. They cut the fee you get for mining Bitcoin in half. Yeah, in half. I'm sorry. Well, it's, I mean, been, it's, it's been working out about four, four years, years. Yeah. roughly. Yeah. So what happens is, is that at the margin or on the margin, depending on what economics professor you had in college, uh, the, 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 the marginal uh, miners aren't making any money. Uh, yeah. The amount of electricity it costs, unless they have a nuclear power plant they tapped into, right. um, are uh, is going to cost more than you know what they're going to get in the Bitcoin. So they drop out, and when they drop out, then you know literally nine times out of nine times the price has gone up simply because supply and demand. There's much less new Bitcoin coming into the market. So I am, not, I am not a believer in Bitcoin. It's a cult. I've known many people who, like me, said in the 2012, what are you, an idiot? 
buying Bitcoin for $35? What have I, you know, why don't I just burn money? And, you know, those same people I told that to have tens of millions of dollars of, of a Bitcoin. So uh, I'm bitter. I'm angry. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but too. I followed it enough to understand that there is a large uh, uh, circle of people around the world who believe in digital gold. They believe in the fact that, you know, that they're all libertarians, right? So that that, that they're, um, you know, the, the Fed doesn't print money. Nobody prints bitcoins. They, you know, it's all regulated, yada, yada, yada. I I, I got to get out of that yada, yada. They're running an ad for, for telephone service out here with George Costanza. And, they, and he's using the word yada, yada, yada and trying to explain it to people. And now it's in my damn head. Anyway, I think it's a good move. And I use options. On these um, on these positions, so I've sold the put options on Mara and Riot, and I have one other small company that's too small to talk about. But uh, strategy, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm convinced that, that a the ETF is going to happen when the ETF comes happen. Now you have the news cycle. The news cycle gets people new that never have bought it before, um, and then when you get into the having, uh, the 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 miners uh, get a win win because the real high. Uh, uh, the, the, the most efficient miners will make more money because the price will go up, and but it doesn't go up enough to bring in the inefficient miners, and a lot of them are inefficient. So that's that's my thesis. And yeah. so far, yeah, I'm up on all these things 20, 30%. But that C-O-N-Y is paying 5% a month in dividends, and it's going up in value, which is- C-O-N-Y. That's impressive. Yeah. It's hey, Coinbase. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, a quick question. Uh, do you include any content in the Stock Traders Almanac about uh, crypto? No, we, we we may put it in the Commodity Traders Almanac. We're, we're, we're trying to wrap that up. But um, I put a paper out there for the public. Uh, I've put it on my feed. Um, you can see a very interesting chart where whoop, it goes right up on, on cue. Um, you know, I didn't get the bottom or, or or the seasonal low in GPTC, and I'm still up today almost forty percent. And I just, you know, it's those positions that you're most nervous about that right. often do the best. That I, I wish I had put more of it, but you know, I, you I know. would, I, I would definitely mention on GBTC. Remember, this is the original Bitcoin ETF. It's a trust but, that tracks it, but it's a trust, right? And it sells. Uh, at the face value of the Bitcoin they own, it sells for about a 24% discount to actually net asset value. And that and that haircut is the reason that they've been going to the SEC to, you know, to say this is not fair. We need the spot price and you won't allow us to do that. So now our you know investors um are getting you know screwed by you guys being uh, crazy. So I, I think we may I may have benefited from the uh, uh, discount when I purchased yes. it. I think I think I got a little lucky on that. Yeah. So the discount is still I think about twenty three percent last time I checked. But but you can buy an option on the GPTC, and if it goes through and it converts because it already has all the paperwork, everything else convert to a spot ETF. It mm -hmm. will go up whatever the discount is, and probably a little more. Uh, well, that's and, good. That's good news. I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that is good. So mm -hmm. let's switch topics on this. I want to pivot out of this and talk about mm -hmm. 2024. Um, we already know your feelings for the rest of this year, Jeff. So let's move on here because next year is a critical election year. Uh, you have uh, obviously with Biden, if he is going to run, he's looking for a Wait a minute, Todd, because of the other elections years were not important? They're all important. They're all important, but where I'm going with this yeah. is that there, there's so much uncertainty that I would think, and it's not just in the White House. You also have Capitol Hill <clears throat> politics and yeah. drama that's taking place. That's, that's more concerning to me. What's going on? Okay. With Hill. okay. They control so, the first one. So let's go with that. So what is going to derail your forecast in the Stock Traders Almanac for 2024? Well, I mean... If, if something happens where Biden's not running, I mean, sitting president running for re-election, you have the S&P up 12.8%. When there's an open field, that's minus one and a half percent. Uncertainty would be elevated if that were to happen. Yeah, if, no question. If, if we can't get some, you know, functionality and compromise in Congress, which whatever side you're on, I mean, you got to kind of tap to the middle and get something done. Um, you know, there's, there's, the other concerns overseas, 
um, the, the, the 10 year, the dollar. I mean, these things we're all watching. And, you know, from my vantage point, that will all get reflected in the stock market. And if the stock market doesn't rally during the bullish season, that will, won't be derailing m my outlook, but it will tell me that I need to change it. Um, I'm already looking for 8 to 12 percent in the Dow in 2024 based upon its seasonality and history and, and, and the four year cycle, maybe a little more for Dow and I mean, excuse me, for S&P and NASDAQ. But, you know, there's a lot of proof to, to come in the pudding here over the next three months. You know, this is the, 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 the sweetest spot of the year every year, um, you know, November through January and the market needs to deliver. And if not, uh, I think we got to be careful. But if it does, what? One follow up before before Toby jumps in. So the eight to twelve percent is that taking into consideration that we will have Fed rate cuts? No. Oh, so we could be really seeing a nice, nice. Uh, it's taking into consideration nice. the power of a sitting president running for re-election, okay. and the fact that we've been tracking that whole cycle for the last three years. Um, rate cuts would 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 support that. I'm not sure it's going to blow it out of the water even more. Uh, if we can get that soft landing, which some people are talking about a lot more right now. I mean, I think Powell said he didn't see a recession in his last, uh, uh, you know, press conference. Um, we've all discussed it here. I think we had our recession in the first two quarters of, of 22 with the back-to-back -back down GDPs. Yeah. Just because they changed the rules doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Yeah. It still works for Germany and the rest of the world, but okay. Um yeah. So, you know, we'll have to watch the, the the GDP, the consumer, and see if things continue to be resilient and and um and, and land softly. Well, okay. remember to I'm gonna call Mr. Diamond right now and make sure I'm long everything. So hold on, guys. So that's that's the plunge protection team. <laughs> yeah, the plunge protection team. And, and again, team. what we tell people, if if the stuff hits the fan, the Fed will cut. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the Fed put is still the Fed put, right? Um, mm -hmm. The, um, the I don't know, I don't know if it's intriguing or not, but uh, when we go into next year, and for all the things you've, you've said, um, remember that we had a narrative going there for about 60 days, which was the Fed's going to continue to hike, that all these, you know, credit card problems and car loan problems are going to wash away the consumer. All of that was wrong. Literally. We were concerned. We were concerned for a September surprise. We talked about potentially a banking issue. Didn't happen. Right. We had some other things that spooked the market. The ten year did it for for us, and so did you know conflict. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say that 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 literally, you know, history will look back and say that it was the. Uh, you know, the bond market that took the 10 year up to five and point one seven five that, you know, the bond vigilantes, old Ed's bond vigilantes um, did the work for the Fed. And, yep. and, and and then Powell actually admitted that at the last at the last meeting, which so, I think everybody was aware of, except for Jay Powell. Um, and and so so now the narrative is that, oh, gosh, if we, you know, Every indicator the person's been using has been dead ass wrong. So let's sort of clean the slate and let's just go with the keep it simple, stupid here. The economy, uh, because of all the inherent strength in the U.S. economy, that's different. Government, government spending is pretty big. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of piece of this. And and therefore, the lag effect of all these rate heights certainly has gotten into the real estate market, certainly got into manufacturing. The thing is going to come down. Um, the economy is going to come down, but the wealth effect for the 25% of the households that own 92% of all the wealth, you know, they never stopped spending. Um, the the Social Security checks never got you know suspended. Uh, the pension plans. So that's the thing I think people have mentioned. You've heard me talk about this a lot, but 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 the people are only doing the math that sort of makes them want to be fearful. And then the other thing was the, the hedge funds are just dead wrong. I mean, the, the hedge funds have been dead wrong on the only money Ackman's ever made this year has been on the bond deal. And the bond deal happened, you know, yeah. for, for when Rick Santelli came on CNBC and said he thought that the 10 year was going to be 14 percent. I never heard of one guy crank, killing the market like Rick Santelli. God bless yeah. him. Yeah. So 
So but, it's, it's all is, new world. There's no playbook, Jeff. I mean, there's your historical, but there's no playbook for the macro. And macro has been driving the thing. And um, and then people just got too worried, too concerned. And now you got to put money in to make sure that your fund gets back up so they don't take the money away on you know, January 5th. Um, right. and, and that's human nature, too. Uh, and if you that's, haven't ever uh, managed money, you don't really understand. The behavior of human beings with their money. Yeah. 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 yeah so right about that. Days, the Fed used to listen to the bond market a lot more. They seem to be doing that again. We went yeah. back and looked at some of the minutes from, you know, 81 when, when uh, Volcker was in there. And they were talking about, you know, the window, you know, if the bond yields, you know, go fluctuate out of this 15 to 21 percent, 15 to 21 percent window, we'll make some adjustments at the next meeting or, or in between. So they're listening to the bond market. The last couple of years, the Fed's been trying to lead the bond market. Maybe they did. We'll have to look back with a little more hindsight and, and to, to judge what they did. But right now they're looking pretty slick. They're looking pretty smart. You know, they were a little late or a lot late, depending upon where you stand. But they made up for it quickly. And now the bond market is helping them out. Well, and they've, you know, they've, we've gotten rid of the, the T word, the trans, uh, you know, it's just, it's just transition. Careful, 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 transitory. Transitory, I know. I just, very, very like another word I was going to use, but I stopped not using it. So what do you, what do you got, Tom? Well, I, want, I just want to close out the show on this. I, let's uh, again. Let's. I want to pivot out of this. Um, final thoughts on the WeWork bankruptcy. Um, it's a bit of a uh, you know. A, who I mean, cares? To Back to you, who guys. cares? That's Maya it. That's Sonny's, all you guys have. Who Maya cares? Hashi's son I mean, loses twenty-one billion dollars that he should have never had in the first place. Did you ever have one of those one of those types of offices? Like, yes, we had one with Regis. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was a it was a robbery. Yes, it was a robbery. And as a matter of fact, they they would just it was a revolving door of tenants going in yeah. and people going out, and they could never There's hold. No and Starbucks. actually, that's part of the WeWork's problem. I was going to say my Starbucks is WeWork. I, every time I go into there, there's 25 people there on their laptop. I can just know. sit in my car with my phone and, and, and do it. You know, it's like, what do I need an office for from somebody else? Yeah, I don't, oh, Todd, sorry. Uh, who cares? We I like a regular business. office. Every era needs the poster child of the biggest F up of all time. And WeWork is the, you know, is the JDS Uniphase AOL of this uh, era. Um, except was, AOL uh, actually used to make money. So that's not even a good analogy. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone has, the, there's always some eight shit crazy thing that goes on that becomes the poster child of free money, of uh, unlimited venture capital, of hubris and greed. Wrap it all together. We work no more. <laughs> It's a great sound bite, but that's why I want to ask the question. So that's definitely uh, going to be something what we can use. So listen, let's close out the show on that. So Jeffrey, tell everybody how everybody can actually access the Stock Traders Almanac. Well, you come check out StockTradersAlmanac.com. You, you come become a member of the newsletter. You get a free copy of the book and you get all our stock picks and ETF picks with buy limits, stop losses. We tell you what to buy, when to buy and when to sell, not just, you know, what. And um, where, where to take some profits. So, uh, and follow me on uh, Twitter at, at Almanac Trader and just Google it. Absolutely. Well, that sounds great. Well, we definitely will be doing that. So, listen, we're going to close out the show. We had a, a nice winning streak. We're going to see what happens uh, the rest of the week. We have Danielle Shea. She's going to be joining us on the show on Thursday. And uh, also, we want to congratulate all these student athletes. Tomorrow is National Signing Day. My son will be signing his national letter of intent. Oh to play division one lacrosse so we're very excited Fantastic. about that so uh but, but we're great but we will uh we'll close it out on that high note so on behalf of jeffrey hirsch and tobin smith i am todd schoenberger i'd like to thank all of you for joining us for my whole self we'll catch you next time take care buy hold sell brought to you by cross check management i want you to smash that like button <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.